So one of the magical things that um, perhaps makes hum this earth quite unique is that it's home to conscious beings. So you mentioned consciousness. Uh, perhaps as a small aside, because we didn't really get specific to what how we might do the alignment. Like you said, is there just a really important research problem? But yeah. do you think engineering consciousness into AI systems is is a, a possibility? Is something that we might one day do? Or is there something mm -hmm. fundamental to consciousness that is, uh, is there something about consciousness that is fundamental to humans and humans only? I think it's possible. I think, um both consciousness and intelligence are information processing, certain types of information processing. And that fundamentally, it doesn't matter whether the information is processed by carbon atoms in neurons and brains or by silicon atoms and, and, and so on in our technology. Some people disagree. This is what I think as a physicist that I, I and uh, that I, consciousness is the same kind of, you said consciousness is information processing. So meaning, you know, uh, I, I think you had a quote of something like, it's information uh, knowing itself, that kind of thing. I think consciousness, it, yeah, is, is the way information feels when it's being processed. When it's being processed, yeah. complex ways. We don't right. know exactly what those complex ways are. It's clear that most of the information processing in our brains does not create an experience. We're not even aware of it, right? Like, for example, um, you're not aware of your heartbeat regulation right now, right. even though it's clearly being done by your body, right? It's just kind of doing its own thing. When you go jogging, you, there's a lot of complicated stuff about how you put your foot down. Mm -hmm. And we know it's hard, that's why robots used to fall over so much, yeah. right? but you're com mostly unaware about it. Your brain just, your CEO consciousness module just sends an email, hey, you know, I'm gonna keep <laughs> jogging along this path. Yes. The rest is on auto autopilot, right? Yes. Uh, so most of it is not conscious, but somehow there is some of the information processing which is. We don't know what what exactly. I, I think this is a science problem that I hope one day we'll have some equation for or something so we can be able to build a consciousness detector and say, yeah, here there is some consciousness, here there is not. Oh, don't boil that lobster because it's feeling pain or it's okay because it's not feeling pain. Right now we treat this as sort of just metaphysics, uh, but um, it would be very useful in emergency rooms to know if a patient has locked in syndrome and is conscious or if they are actually just out. And in the future, if you build a very, very intelligent helper robot to take care of you, you know, I think you'd like to know if you should feel guilty about shutting it down or if, or if it's just like a zombie going through the motions like a fancy tape recorder, right? And and it, once we can make progress on the science of consciousness and figure out what is conscious and what isn't, then um, we, assuming we want to create positive experiences and not suffering, we'll probably choose to build some machines that are deliberately unconscious that do incre you know incredibly boring, repetitive jobs in a iron mine somewhere or whatever. And maybe we'll choose to create helper robots for the elderly that are conscious, so so that people don't just feel creeped out that the you know the, machine, the robot is just faking it mm -hmm. uh, when it acts like it's sad or happy. Well, like I said, elderly, I, I think everybody gets pretty deeply lonely in this world, yeah. and uh, so there's a place I think for everybody to have a connection with conscious beings, whether they're human or otherwise. But I know for sure that I would, if I had a robot. If I was going to develop any kind of personal emotional connection with it, I would be very creeped out if I knew it in an intellectual level that the whole thing was just a fraud. You know, today you can buy a little talking doll for a, for a kid, which will say things, and the little child will often think that this is actually conscious yes. and even reveal secrets to it that then go on the internet and <laughs> with all sorts of creepy repercussions. Uh, you know, I would not want to be just hacked and tricked like this. If I was gonna be developing real emotional connections with a, with a robot, I would wanna know that this is actually real. It's acting conscious, acting happy because it actually feels it. And I, I think this is not sci-fi. I, I think 
it's possible to measure, to come up with tools. And make, after we understand the science of consciousness, yeah. you're saying it's, we'll be able to come up with tools that can yeah. measure consciousness and definitively say like, this thing is experiencing the things it says it's experiencing. Yeah. Kind of by definition, if it is a physical phenomena, information processing, that, and we know that some information processing is conscious and some isn't, well, then there is something there to be discovered with the methods of science. Giulio Tononi has stuck his neck out the farthest and written down some equations for a theory. Maybe that's right, maybe it's wrong, we certainly don't know. Uh, but I, I applaud that kind of efforts to, to sort of take this say, this, say this is not just something that philosophers can have beer and muse about, but something we can measure and, we can study. And coming, bringing that back to us, I, I think what we would probably choose to do, as I said, is if we cannot figure this out, choose to make, to be quite mindful about what sort of consciousness, if any, we put in, in different machines that we have. We, um, and certainly, not, we, we wouldn't want to make, we should not be making a bunch of machines that suffer without us even knowing it, right? And if, if at any point someone decides to upload themselves like Ray Kurzweil wants to do, I don't know if you've had him on your show. We agree, but then COVID happens, okay. so we're waiting it out a little bit. You know, suppose he uploads himself into this robo Ray yeah. and it talks like him and acts like him and laughs like him. And before he powers off his biological body, he would probably be pretty disturbed if he realized that there's no one home. This robot is not having any subjective experience, right? If we repl if humanity gets replaced by by uh, ro by machine descendants, which do all these cool things and build spaceships and go to intergalactic rock concerts, and it turned out turns out that they are all unconscious, uh, just going through the motions, wouldn't that be like the ultimate uh, robot zombie apocalypse? Right, just a play for empty benches. 